Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the stream. We have transitions. Ooh, fancy. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, I want to get some feedback if you can hear this fan or not. And if you can, let me know. I'm going to get my phone set up so I can actually watch and see the chat. Okay, actually, it sounds like you guys can hear me fine. I have it running on my phone, too. And let me just get my moderators all squared away. Mr. Blue Penguins, fear not. Ooh, transitions. Cool. So, how you doing, guys? Uh, for this live stream, I think we got distances set up pretty good here. Uh, a little bit different from standing, makes me uncomfortable. Uh, we're gonna be building an Ender 5 Plus. Now this Ender 5 Plus was provided by DO3D. It was from a contest I won where you guys all helped me with, which was great. It was, uh, if you guys remember, I had some, we had to pick a file we wanted made, a suit, an armor, something. Um, you know, it could be an old DO3D file they hadn't modeled yet, or it could be a new file that you wanted modeled. Uh, mine won, that's why we all have the Mark 39 Starboost file for free. They are working on the other winner, the Iron Bat uh, suit, which that'll be kind of cool, that'll be coming out soon. But since I won, whoever picked it also got a free Ender 5 Plus. Now the reason this took so long to get here, and I wanted to keep it a little under wraps until we obviously, I got it. Um, DO3D couldn't ship me the Ender 5 overseas, I live in England, and shipping was like half the price of the printer. This is a big box. So what they did instead is they PayPal, they, uh, they used it for their next giveaway. They PayPal'd me the money, I ordered it, and you obviously know what the times in the, of the world right now, it took a little bit just to get here. Uh, now it's here. And on the same day this one arrived, Creality actually sent me another Ender 5 Plus uh, for a separate project, so stay tuned for that. That's a little bit of a secret secret, but I can tell you um, I finally got their attention and I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a collaboration project with them that involves an Ender 5 Plus some Iron Man stuff, and a lot of tutorials, so stay tuned for that. So we're gonna build one, and we're gonna call this the DO3D one, okay? Uh, already blowing up here, I see that. That's really awesome, guys. Um, so we're gonna be doing a little bit of a segment back and forth kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna build the other five for just a little bit, and every 15 to 20 minutes, I'll pause, we'll do some questions, I'll answer the pertinent questions. I kind of have to get away from answering every single possible question because it eats up so much damn time during these streams that I can't allot it, especially if y'all want to get this built and running. So save your really good questions for these little segments. Um, what is it? It's 8.04 right now. We'll probably shoot for the first one, 8.25, and we'll do it till like 8.30, and we'll roll back in. So, so if my moderators can uh, barely picks up. It is on its lowest setting. So I'm gonna turn this off for now. It's a little warm in here, but I think we'll survive. And we'll close the window. We're, we're live, cool. So now I can talk a little bit quieter. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot in here. So an Ender 5 Plus is a very special type of printer. It's, a lot of people call it a Core XY. I even called it a Core XY, it's not. A Core XY uses a very uh, special type of belt system. It's like a fake Core XY. Regardless, the benefit of something like this, this is a standard Ender 3, pretty tiny. The bed moves in and out, and you can see it turning on, don't do this. Um, the bed moves in and out, like that, and then the gantry moves down, and the Z, uh, the nozzle moves left and right, okay? Your X, your Y, and your Z. An Ender 5, the bed actually doesn't move at all. The bed drops down, if none of you have ever seen that. And what that does is it helps eliminate any of the wobble you might get from your prints kind of swaying back and forth. Because we've all seen our beds move obnoxiously fast sometimes and you're like, eh, that might be a little bit scary. So that's the benefit of something like an Ender 5. Uh, it's this big carriage kind of a special type of printer and it, you know, it just lowers the print down and then you have a crossbar that moves forward and back and then the same way your nozzle moves left and right. So it's a pretty unique printer. I'm really excited, it's my first one. Um, it's the uh, it's the biggest of the Ender line. So let me get this off the table and let's crack into this thing. Sitting was never an option. Yep. All right, I'm gonna turn this back on while I'm building. There we go. This fan is janky. 
now it's making noise. Cool. So if I turn here, no noise. All right. Oh, uh, I'm I am excited. I'm hoping to get some type of print done on this thing, but special bonus for you all. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna induce some problems to this thing. I'm actually gonna probably sabotage this a little bit. Oh, that is a very large printer. Holy shit. Wow. Wowzer. Oh my. Oh my lord. Oh, look at that. Oh, my razor. No. Look at that. And it's actually, all right, this is that really special type of build surface. It's like that carbonate glass. I don't have any printers with this type of, um, with this type of surface. This is really cool, actually. Ooh. And let me see, the heat cable, yep, yeah, there it is. Yo, that's fancy. Language. Um, no, it's still not as big as the CR-10, honestly. So, here we go. Look at that. Oh, there's the camera. That is, uh, I believe this is 350. So we're gonna null all of this. And if you don't know what nulling is, you don't watch Adam Savage. So, that's fun. Oh, guys, guys. So worth it. They just gave me the best PLA in the world. Um, this is this is high quality diamond filament garbage. Um, that is it is literally the worst PLA in the world that they give you. Um, never use it. So yeah, I have my own. I have a nice roll of uh, Sunlu PLA Plus Red. We're gonna roll with this, even for the test prints. Get out of here, piece of crap! Wow, this is really cool. Ooh. We got our crossbars. Neat. Neat, neat, neat. Let's see. So, what do we got down here? Take that out. This is packaged very nicely, by the way. Um, I was worried. So, here's our... Eh, Alright, so this first thing I know automatically, this is going to go. Um, everything from the nozzle. Wait, this is a BL Touch? I didn't know that. What? Oh, I had no idea this had a BL Touch on it. Yo, that's dope. Oh, this just made my life so much easier. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna be able to induce less problems. <laughs> um, interesting, interesting. It's Creality, all you have to do is not tighten any bolt and you'll sabotage yourself just fine. Man, Superman, you are not wrong. Um, the only thing is when you, hey, thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you. I was gonna explain it and then I got totally to uh, sidetrack, so thank you for that. Yeah, so they, this is the same thing that was on my my CR10 Max. They put a um, wire loom over everything, and unfortunately what this does is this puts a lot of weight on the system, because we have our crappy uh, Bowden tube here, the white PTFE, which is garbage. Um, the first couple, I'm gonna order upgrades for this, and one of them is gonna be a Bowden Capricorn tube, but it kind of, it, it droops. So I'm gonna make a system to keep this up, but I'm not gonna cut anything apart just yet. We're gonna get this out. So let's move this over here. Uh, so here's the top gantry. Now, as I was saying before, this is your, this is your, uh, if I'm looking at it, so this is your new Y axis. So this moves the entire rail up and down, forward and back, and then your nozzle still moves left and right. So you're substituting your Y, instead of the bed moving, it actually moves the entire rail system across the print. This thing is so cool. Oh, I'm so excited. So I can't null right this second because I gotta get everything out of the damn box. So, do you guys know what's in this? You guys, you guys know what's in this. This is uh, garbage parts. So can't wait for that. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate Creality at all, but man, they gotta start putting. They gotta start putting some better shit in some of their boxes. Um, cool, 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 cool. This is the thing. This is your Z act. This is your Z gantry. And if I'm not crazy, this should spin down. Hey, look at that. So this is one of the sides of the printer, and this is what your bed, and I can actually spin this, you can see it, you can see it's coming down. So this is one of my Z motors, and I can't push it down, that backlash nut's really good. Okay. Put that there for now. Um, yeah, here's the other one. Hey, 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 hey. 
So this is obviously much bigger than a normal Ender 5. An Ender 5 has the same type of setup where it, the bed moves up and down, which is really cool. But this one just has more motors, it has more rails, it's a much more stable printer. <sighs> Say hi to Iron Man. All right, so here's the bottom. Yo, what? They gave me a, a, a they gave me an adapter. Um, a US and Europe to a UK. I've never seen, none of my printers have ever done that. That's, I don't want to open the box of goodies yet. 41 in the chat, but only two likes. <laughs> We can't have that. All right, so this one's already built in. Okay. So that's a control box right there. That is a beefy goddamn control box. And if it's anything like the Max, it has two dedicated separate power supplies. Um, that is So that's a big problem with the big printers. Your uh, CR10S, your S5s, your S4s. They're not meant to be big printers. All those printers are, are CR10Ss beefed up, like bigger rails, like the Ender Extender. That's all those printers are. So what happens is you have this giant bed now that can't heat properly. You have this giant bed that can't move properly. Um, so it's not really, they're not really the best printers and they require a lot of upgrades. Now they're great build surfaces, but you're gonna have to throw a lot of stuff at them. What they did on the CR10 Max, and I, I'm assuming they did it on this, is they actually put in uh, two separate power supplies uh, to help handle the heated bed, which is absolutely great. Hey, shut up, Chris. So it, for those of you who don't know, um, I had an Ender 3, I have an Ender 3, and uh, I was, I built it here. It was donated for a class I teach, and I built it here. And I brought it, uh, I had it plugged into um, one of my 120 volts, because um, my house is dual voltage, it has 120 and 220. And I plugged it in and I brought it, it worked, it, fine, you know, it was work, working fine. And then I brought it into uh, the center where I, where I was teaching the classes and I plugged it into a 220 volt. And the second I turn that power switch on, I hear pop. And then the Ender 3 no longer worked. Now, Nine times out of ten, all that's going to do is roast your power supply. Fries the power supply like that. I'm not that lucky just because who I am as a person. So it actually jumped my, my power supply and also took out the motherboard and the thermistor, which was very impressive actually. So uh, that was fun. Don't do that. Make sure you – now if it had been the other way, nothing would have happened. If I had left it on 220 and plunged it into a 120, nothing would have happened. Um, it might have powered up, but it, it would not have heated properly. Uh, we're going to put this here so it's just out of the way. All right. So we still got some time before I'm going to start taking questions. All righty. Somebody gave me a very nice warning about this printer. And it has to do with where you mount the spool holder based on the instructions. And I'm going to show you guys what that was when we get to that. And he even sent me a picture of it as it was happening. Like, as it happened to him, and it was really funny. I left. I hope everybody's having a good night. I hope everybody's having a good Sunday. The weather in England is fantastic right now. Um, I'm, I'm very much enjoying it. I had a little bit of a car meet today, so that was fun. All right, the box of goodies that a lot of people forget to take. Well, that's just not fair. So it has, it's a European plug, a two-prong. That's why they gave me, there we go. Now this wouldn't have been a problem. I'm actually probably just gonna get rid of this power cable. Um, it's a pretty standard computer power supply cable. It doesn't really, you don't really need it. So here's our power cable. We'll put that there. What else we got? We have our data transfer cable for flashing the firmware. And we are definitely gonna flash this firmware. Ooh, oh, is this a good one? Yes. Okay, fun fact. Creality printers come with two different types of putty knives. Um, some of the lower ends, the Ender 3s, uh, I think my Max came with this really bad scraper. Now this thing has no edge to it at all. Like you're, you're not even scraping the prints, you're pushing them off. There's no shaved edge. Both my CR10s and apparently this Ender 5 
came with the very nice putty scrape, uh, putty knife. This one has actually has a lip on it, so you can actually get under the prints. So my other one's a little damaged. It has duct tape on the handle because I, I would, what I would do is I would put it under a print and then hammer the back. It worked. So now I have a nice fancy new one. Thank you, Creality, for kind of giving a crap. Uh, we have some clips for the thingamabobber. Uh, are very oh that's a good SD card yeah so this is like a max so this this gave me a very nice eight gig SD card and I can't get this bag open there we go I got it open yeah this is uh so some of them they come with actually uh um netic eight gig SD cards these are a much higher transfer rate these are actually pretty good SD cards compared for what you get not the really no name eight gig SD cards that burn out in like a month um. These USB adapters suck. Get rid of them. Get yourself a nice card reader because these shitty white uh, SD card readers, they, they become intermittent and they don't last long. Um, and they can also mess up your data transfer and give you G-code errors. So just scrap that, keep the SD card. Now there's gonna be some files loading on this. I didn't render any G-code for this. Um, I could if we have enough time. Uh, I could slice up a Benchy real fast, but we're gonna try to print with what's on here. But if we're having problems with it, if you're having problems with it, and this, your, your prints are coming out like crap, under extreme, over extreme, whatever the hell, slice new G-code, get rid of what's on here because it's not perfect. You know, It could be a corrupt file. So give that a shot. I've had that happen a few times. Um, it'll drive you up the wall. It really will. So what do we got? Let's look at the, let's look at some of the parts and tools that they give us, okay? Zip ties, so you can zip tie stuff. <laughs> um, the generic bag of Allen keys, your wrenches, your screwdrivers. Now I have too many of these. I already have my nice kit, my repair kit sitting here with all my wrenches. So I'm gonna use these and I'm gonna save these for a rainy day. Okay, so these are just gonna go away. Um, we'll put my screwdriver back in there and we're missing one. Here you are, here you are. I'll take you out. Hey bro, keep going. You made me envious and I'll buy another three. <laughs> awesome dude. Cool, yeah. Sorry, I'm doing it. I need to ignore the chat and I wasn't doing it. So we'll do this, we'll keep that there. This thing, it comes with a little styrofoam. It's a needle, you will poke yourself with it. If you don't know what this is, this is a nozzle cleaner. Cleans your nozzle, heat your nozzle up, stick it through, get any junk out of there. It is very effective for getting out blockages. Save that, don't lose it. I'm gonna put this over here with the bag of goodies because I'm not actually gonna need that. Oh. Uh, It doesn't matter. It doesn't friggin' matter if you spend $180 on a goddamn Ender 3 or you spend $1,000 on a CR10 Max or six or $700 on an Ender 5 Plus. You get the same damn nippers every time. The same blue, they're gonna ride up and break your rubber nippers. It doesn't matter. So now I have a nice new pair of nippers one, two, three. These are my original ones covered in duct tape. Okay, these are the ones that came with my first CR10S. Now I have five. And I have my other ender, so I'll have six. So that's fun. That's fun for me. Two of them are in perfect condition. Not all of them are the same. So that's that's cool. Yep. Put those over there. Five. Yep. Never expect better quality. If you guys ever built Gundam models or you're in the Gundam model realm, you'll know what God Hand nippers are. And they're amazing. Creality would never give you those. Never. Okay. Oh, guys, it came with a plastic bag. Oh, oh slow down. I'm excited. This is me excited. A bunch of bolts. Dope. A bunch of small bolts. Doper. A bunch of more bolts. Dopest. Some couplers. An extra nozzle. Something I have never seen before. What is that? Oh, it's an extra tip for my BL Touch. What? My Max didn't even come with that. Maybe it did. Maybe I threw it out. Shit. That's interesting. BL Touches can bend. The little plastic nib thing can break, can bend. That's cool that they give you an extra. Pay, pay attention to where you put these. Um, I've, I've messaged, been talking to people online. 
they're, oh, they had a Bowden 2 blowout, they had this, they had that, I need this. And I'll be like, hey, but what about your spare parts? And they're like, oh my god, I forgot about those. They're in a box somewhere. Keep these handy. I have them in my little emergency repair kit here. Right there. They're going to stay with that. I also have a sensor, a runout sensor override plug. This came with one of my CR10s. Um, if your filament runout sensor starts acting up, you plug this in and it, it kind of stops it from working, which is nice. Yeah, my, my Max definitely did not come with a spare BL Touch sensor. Are these? What are these? This is the loyalty card. I wish this was a sticker. They give you this little thingy. Pretty sure it's not a sticker. I think it's just like a card. Is this a sticker? Qualified certificate. Yeah, it's this little qualified certificate thing. I wish it was a sticker. Because I like stickers. Ender 5 Plus or CR10 V2? Um... Ender five, uh, for saw, uh, Ender 5 Plus. Yeah. So let's cut open the bed and get these instructions out. If any of you were thinking about getting an Ender uh, CR10 S or CR10 V2, order the, 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 the common problem emerging on these for everybody I help it seems to be the Bowden tubes. It's like reality. Put even worse Bowden tubes in them. Um, upgrade to the Bowden Capricorn tube immediately. Uh, I helped uh, Mark Boken. If you're in the chat, um, I helped him troubleshoot his printer for like a month, and it was just his shitty Bowden tube. Uh, unfortunately, I wish Creality would stop using these white ones. That is a thick book. Thick. Thick. Cool. So I think I got everything kind of out where I want it. I have bubble wrap on this table because I was working on my suit, so that kind of worked out. And we'll put this over here. And I'm going to take a drink. So, let's do some questions. I have everything out, kind of null. Oh, hold on, wait. Ah. That's not Cut with the back side of the razor. It works worse. We're going to get the rods out. And then we'll say then we'll then we'll say we're old, okay? And uh, so start asking those questions. We'll take like a five minute break for questions, and then we'll jump back into this while I formulate a plan. So. A sensor to disable a sensor, pretty much. Um, no, it's a, it's a trigger to disable to disable a sensor. I said every five year old ever. I have the Ender Five Pro and love it. I probably threw it out two seconds later. Make sure you... <laughs> so, uh, Terius, Terius, Terius? I'm butchering your name, I'm sorry. Um, oh, the pros, that, let me say this. My Max and a couple people's CR10S pros, V2s, they come with blue Capricorn tubes. I don't think Creality is using genuine boating Capricorn tubes. Um, I think they are using their own PTFE Bowden tubes that are stronger, but they're not the Capricorn ones. Because my Max still had Bowden tube blowouts. I swapped it for a, um, actually, this one, the one on my Ender. This is actually the Bowden tube that came with my Max. Because my Ender had a genuine Capricorn tube on it, and it was fine. So I put this tube, I swapped them, and I haven't had a single problem with my Max. The, uh, the ones that are coming with the Pros and the Ma uh, 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 CR10 Max is just an S5 Pro. It really is. Um, I think they're using a subpar quality Capricorn tube. And it's showing. People are having, and it, it, it doesn't help that it's a dual drive extruder. Those don't help at all. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm about to downgrade my Max from a dual drive because it's that shitty. I hate dual drive extruders. Um, that's for another day. <laughs> Can you do a backflip? Yes, I can, not in here. How many printers are you up to now and which is your favorite? Yes, Creality is just using Bluetooth, not Capricorn. Cre yeah, thank you, somebody confirms it. It's shitty. Order, even if your printer came with a, a Bluetooth, order a new one and uh, do yourself a favor and downgrade your dual drive. Um, 
Hold on, let me get out of studio mode because this is I can't see what I look like. Like I want to make sure I'm in frame. Hey, we're good. Okay. Um, I'm up to so I got four in there. This will be five, six. I'm up to six printers. My Ender three is going away. I'm sending that to my nephew. I already talked to the person who donated it. There's a whole other thing to go with that. He's cool with it. It's being donated to another cause. And then I'll have five running. I'll have two CR10Ss, two Ender 5 Pluses, and my CR10 Max. Um, and so far, my CR10S is still my favorite. It is an absolute monster. It is a workhorse. It has, it has the typical eight, you know, problems, like every printer, but damn, it just runs. It, I love it. Hey, is it from Creality? What are you talking about, uh, Tomic? Maybe they'll just use... Yeah, they're definitely using just generic PTFE, which kind of sucks. Um, there, are, there are repetitive, reoccurring problems with a lot of these printers that we can pick out. Bowden 2 blowouts. Um, the Bowden 2 coming out of the nozzle. Now, they're, obviously we can fix them. I haven't had... I don't have, I'm, I'm going to be uh, jinxing myself. I haven't had a Bowden blowout on either of my CR10s ever since I upgraded to an all-metal extruder and a Bowden Capricorn tube. So like, why not just send them? You know, like just build, just just do it. I don't know. That maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just being picky. Are Ender Fives good? I I I don't know. This is my first one. It looks cool. It looks really cool. Um, this is my first uh, build plate like this. I'm I'm excited to try it out. Oh. Also, if you upgrade to a magnetic flex bed, keep using your keep using your bed clips. Don't like, oh, the bed's magnetic, it sticks by itself. Use your bed clips because if by chance your print wants to shift, there's nothing holding the, the bed in place now. Even if it's magnetic, like Yeah, use your clips. Have you ever thought about the Delta printer? Yes, I have. Um, they're interesting. I don't know if I like them. I, I don't know. They're, they're, if for anybody who doesn't know what a Delta printer is, um, and if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I know what they are, if, you're, if I know what you're talking about. They're these tall printers, and they have these three rods, and it almost looks like an hourglass, and they move, and they confuse the hell out of me. But uh, they're usually a round build surface, and they build up. They're, they're really cool looking. Look at them. Um, they don't appeal to me. I, their build surface is usually tall, not wide. And I print a lot of shit that's wide. Um, helmets, for instance. Um, so this is the glass. This is the glass build plate with the uh, with the better surface on it. This is really. Oh, you can see through it. That's pretty cool. And to give you guys some context, here's a helmet that I literally can't pick up right now on the build surface. So pretty big. It's a pretty big build. I could you could, you could one shot a helmet easily on this thing. So that's what that looks like. That's fine. Can somebody can somebody verify uh God was it it's it's 350 by 350 by 400? I don't know the, I don't remember the build surface on this. They're all so different and it annoys me. So somebody can somebody put that in the chat if they want. One of the mods, do your job. Yeah deltas are great for vertical. I was wondering if you finally got one from Creality. Yes, I do. This isn't it. This is from DO3D. I have another Ender 5 Plus in there from Creality. What can I do for moisture issues here in India? It's 80% humidity. That sucks. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> get a dehumidifier? I don't know, man. That's that's hard. Heard that Delta printers cause problems around the extruder arms. Maybe. Good point. I think you know. But don't scratch it. Yeah, something like that. Cool, cool, cool. Anybody, anybody with that size? No. Okay, so we're gonna jump back into the build. That was like six minutes of questions. Um, everything's going good. I'm nulled. Not sponsored by whatever drink I'm drinking. Ah. All right, going back to the build. Awesome. Building an Ender 5 Plus. This is one beefy boy. So 
So you know what? I'm actually going to put the build surface away over here. So just so I don't hit it or scratch it, because I'd be upsetty spaghetti. Ender 5 plus printer to be the chief evangelist, evangelist guidebook to make top quality, and it's spelled horribly, by the way, um, to make top quality 3D printer. I love poorly translated English. Um, I dealt with it for years in Japan, and it, it just it brings me joy. It really does. So it has a general list, frame part, assembly. Uh, 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 uh. So that goes there, that goes there. We put the control box there, and those go in the center. And those, okay, okay, okay. Okay. All right, so I need the control box. That'll go first. So we'll those, put them here. 350 by 350 by 400 millimeters. Thank you very much. Not one of my mods. Thanks, man. <laughs> what good are you people? Clearly, nothing. Wasted space. I give them shit, but they're good people. Now everybody's hitting me with the, uh, you need new mods. No, I don't. We're good on mods. All right. So we want, are these the same? M5, 25, so those are the M, so these are going to support the bottom of the frame. And then we need to take note, there's a hole at the top of the thingamajigger. And I guess it's not on all of them. Please take note that the hole in the top of the piece facing left and right in the relation to the front. That, um, that didn't make any sense. Ah, so there's holes at the top of the rail. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. And, uh, yeah. But they're the same, so why does that matter? Wow, there's even metal shavings in there. Ah, uh, you know what? That's going to confuse me immediately, so we're going to turn this around. The pictures all have it facing you, and with my luck, I would mess something up. It's the biggest one. <laughs> uh, Yeah, sorry I'm not talking. I, I, I get super focused. You guys are definitely going to hear me talking to myself throughout this because I just, I do. Um, if somebody, if one of my mods wants to pick out one question that's been asked um, that I could kind of talk about while I'm working, nothing that's too highbrow effort, but like that I could still BS my way through, feel free. Or uh, maybe this one of my mods has questions. I don't know. I don't want complete silence because that's boring. I can talk and work for the most part. But don't ask me to really think about anything.
Yeah, oh man, I didn't think about moving back to Okinawa and going back to Japan and having the 3D print. I don't know if our dehumidifiers would be able to keep up with it, honestly. I would need a dehumidifier next to every printer. Or I'd have to build enclosures. Oof. Guys, if we get if we if we go back if, if we move back to Japan, I might have to get out of the 3D printing game. I might be uh that might be all she wrote. <laughs> and then I'll just upload videos of me snorkeling and scuba diving all the time. Which I don't think a lot of you would hate, but How much does the humidity affect PLA plus? I'm not sure. I know I leave my fill I leave a lot of my filament out too long. I know that. Um, I I just leave it on my I leave it on the printer until it's empty, really. Um, and I'll get some stringing occasionally, but nothing nothing to nothing to you know really care about. The cable that's the spool holder is already irritating me. All right, so the toolbox is pretty nice. Big beefy switch. Hear that? Yeah. Can you uh, convert the Starbucks armor to scuba suit? There was this one Japanese guy in the Facebook group who had to take this printer out of the enclosure during the summer because it would get too hot. Yeah, I believe that. So those are all in the thingamajiggy. Cool, awesome. Now we're gonna put the top on, and the top on goes like that, and the bolts go in. Ah, that's what those are for. Ah, that's smart. Smart. All right, this goes on the top. Right? Right? Yeah, it goes here, and here, and here. Hey, look at that. That's really cool. For that. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to get rid of that. This is like an older style BL touch, I think. Saint Smart? This does look like an IKEA table. I mean, I, Kaylee, it's funny you said that. Um, I have seen people, what they'll do is they'll take, they'll make feet that come up and they'll put a, a top on this. This way they can put another one on top because this really doesn't need to, this has always a set height. It will never be taller than this. So you could build something on the top of this. Um, maybe I'll just stack them. <laughs> Probably not. I know better than that. I remembered something. This is totally not 3D printing related. This is a very fun build. I love this. I, uh, is it weird that I wish my printers came less assembled? Um, because, and honestly, I think for new beginners, I think it's better when you buy a printer that's less assembled. Um, these out of box printers cause people to not understand the systems at all. Um, and the worst thing I think you can get as a beginner is a pro. It is because a CR-10S Pro, here's the build video for it. Open the box, take the gantry, stand it up, put the four bolts in the bottom, plug in three things or two, three or two, depending on the printer, plug in your power uh, supply, and you're done. That's how you build a Pro. You know nothing about the printer now. You literally just put in four screws and some plugs. You have no idea what anything's called. You've, you haven't been like invested in that printer whatsoever. So when something goes wrong and I say extruder, you look at me like I'm crazy. Like, uh, you know how many times I'll be like, hey man, check your extruder. And they point to the nozzle all the time, all the freaking time. Well, it's extruding the plastic. No, it's not, not really, I guess. Ah. Yeah, sorry. 
Chat, chat getting in the way. So yeah, that's like the worst thing you can do because you don't understand the printer. You don't understand the system and you don't understand how to troubleshoot it and what all the names are. Um, I know people who have been printing for a year or so and they still can't name all the parts on the printer. And I'm not talking about like there are specific technical names and this and that and this is your XY gantry axis crossbar. No, just like what's your extruder? What are your stepper motors based, based on their coordinates and positions? Like it's simple stuff and people aren't learning about it. Um, and unfortunately these printers aren't good enough where it's fire or forget, which a lot of people want. They want that fire and forget kind of uh, thing. You know, they want out of box. Oh, I just paid a thousand dollars for a 3D printer. It should work out of box. No, it shouldn't. If you had paid $5,000 for a 3D printer, it'll work out of the box. These are still DIY. Give it a couple more years. And maybe we'll get there, but we're not there right now. Definitely not there right now. There are some assembly required. Now I know why he told me to get another Ender 3 here to, and slightly hate him now. Uh, what's the Ferguson pin? I don't know what that is. Is that on the BL Touch? I only have one BL Touch and it's on my Max and it works, so I don't mess with it. Hot end, yeah. A lot of people don't know what the hot end is. It, 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 it's confusing. This is a really cool setup. I like this. Let's just play with this. So looking at my Z, my end stop triggers, that's pretty cool. So that's going to probably fall out one day. That's no biggie. We'll have to deal with that as it arises. I kind of have a sneeze. There's another one. So it does have a run out sensor. Okay. Plastic. I might move that. I don't know how I feel about that. And it has a BL touch, so it doesn't have a Z end, a Z stop. Okay. Oh, the L I guys, I have to stop. I have to stop the build. I forgot LED fluid. I key, that key, that joke, that joke. All right, assembly two, top frame. Yeah, cool. Assembly part three. Um, we're gonna do another questions at in ten minutes. I'm gonna do a bunch of questions. So these go in through the bottom, and they screw in through there and there. Something like that. Ah. Ah, okay. Interesting. So they get bolted onto the side here. Now is there a separate, or is left and right different? Lift Z axis frame. With my luck, they are gonna be different and I'm gonna somehow put them on the wrong way. All right, gotta be honest, these look exactly the same. Cool. So the stepper motor faces inwards and it doesn't matter. So we're gonna get a little creative here. It should work. No. So we'll do one at a time. And I'm assuming it's these other big screws. What are you for? Ah, okay, so you, those ones secure the thingamabobber to the, the doohickey. Don't forget to tighten the doohickey. Because if you don't, you're going to have a bad time. It's like a pizza when you forget when you're supposed to French fry. 
I'm gonna have a bad time. Did I get demonetized for quoting South Park? Is that a thing? No? Hey, all 42 people watching right now, hit like. That'd be cool. That'd be swell. Gee whiz, Batman. One of you listened. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Oh, oh, a couple more of you listened. Hey. Uh-oh. Thanks, guys. Hashtag dislike. Don't forget, everybody. I put in no effort and I'm full of excuses. What's your life plans for the future? What are you talking about, and Andre? I have lots of life plans. I have a, lots of future. I don't know. I'm, st I'm still young. I'm still trying to figure out my life. Aren't we all? Don't make me have an existential crisis on camera. That'd be cool. Appreciate it. Three D print a future. I am three D printing a future. My future. Damn, that make a good. That make a good shirt, huh? Three D print your future. Is this Q and A time? This is Q and A time. Hit me with the Q and A's. I can answer while I tighten bolts. Um, yeah, Q and A time. I should have like a a, a song that starts playing. We're trying to get one of those buzzers at work. That every time somebody does something really cool, we just hit it, and it just gets really loud. I also work with tools, so that's fine. Alright. You can't 3D print Ultron. Just joined, but ever thought about getting the Ender Extender? 160 for 400 by 400 by 400? Yes, I have thought about the Ender Extender. IMO, it's not worth it. The Ender's motors are smaller steppers. They're not really meant for large printers. Um, they're not meant to do that. When you start extending printers like that, uh, it can cause problems that I just don't... And now, what, that's 160... Um, and now you have a bigger build surface, a much bigger build surface. You're going to need to start upgrading things if you want reliability. So you're not just going to get the Ender Extender. You're going to get some other upgrades. Now your Ender is starting to turn into something bigger that's approaching four and $500. And I don't know. It doesn't seem worth it to me. Um, it's cool. It's cool in theory. But if it was cheaper, if it was under 100 bucks, yeah. But I don't think it's worth it. Once I told one of my kids to have a nice day, he turned around, snapped, don't tell me what to do. I feel like James is that kid. Just got back in here and you still aren't done assembling in already a half hour. Yeah, I'm sorry, Joel. No, I don't run Octoprint. Um, I, I definitely, I'm not a fan of Octoprint. The only thing I like about Octoprint is the spaghetti detector. Um, but... I monitor my prints anyway, remotely. Um, I have way, I have cameras, and I have ways to kill my prints. Um, I, 
for every one person I see running Octoprint successfully, there's 10 more who are having issues with it. Not worth it. How many Iron Man helmets do you have in your house? Does my garage count? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 15 in my possession currently. Not all of them belong to me though. Um, I'm probably that kid too, Caleb. Uh, I think if you were looking into an Ender 3 and an Ender Extender to save the money and buy a different printer, the money you sink into the upgrades could be spent on different printers. Exactly, Chris. For that price, you're, you can get a very nice CR-10S. Um, you're, even appro you're even approaching the V1 Pros. Yeah, Tony, yeah. Uh, Tony Stark over there, he, is, he uses Octoprint pretty successfully, honestly. Um, but you all, I'm sure if you're in any of the Facebook groups, you guys see exactly what I'm talking about. Hooked up Octoprint. This won't work. My BL Hooked up Octoprint and my BL Touch isn't working. Oh, man. I see that one all the time. Um, just, I don't need it. Um, and I trust my printers pretty good to where I don't care about spaghetti detector. I don't have failures too often. Um, I, I have my stuff dialed in pretty nicely. I'm not worried about it. And again, I check on my prints, so I don't really care. If you had one chance, anyone, uh, if you had one chance to get one print done in metal, what would it be? My entire Iron Man suit. <laughs> What is that? The Mark Seven? Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, jokes. Do you guys like the new backdrop? Yeah. Um, the wall's painted. It adds better contrast. It's like a gunmetal. I know it's a little, obviously. I think it looks black or gray um, on on camera. We're still working on lighting. One of my lights fell. So I have to use my overhead, but it works better for this. Um, oh wait, hold on. Hey, so we're still revising. I'm trying to get rid of some clutter, make it look a little bit more manageable. It really makes the suit look great. I know there's a printer in the way, but uh, it really makes this thing look great against the wall. Um, oh no. Guys, I scratched the paint. Oh no, we're good. Okay, it was, a, it was just a smudge. There's a smudge on the lens. Yeah, people do. I just, I don't know. I don't really care for it. Um, not my cup of tea, if you will. This thing is so cool. I am, I am excited. Does this have an end stop? Yeah, it does. So they bought them out. Cool. Now my fingers are greasy. That's fine. That's a terrible reason to want Octoprint. Thanks for the felt tape trick. Never thought of it. And we'll add it to my suit. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. Yes, my new camera. For those of you who don't know because you're not on the Discord, I got this fancy new camera. It is a Sony A660 with a DJI Ronin SC gimbal. This thing is a beast. Uh, yeah, uh, and I have an adapter on the way to let me stream with this so we don't need this webcam anymore even though I just got this webcam. Um, yeah, this thing is... Gorgeous. I'm still learning all the bits and bobs with it. Um, I, it uh, I'm going to call this, um, I want to name this camera, and I think I'll name it Malta. Because we were supposed to take a trip to Malta, but with the current state of the world, we couldn't do that. So those funds went to a new camera. What about War Machine? I don't like War Machine. Genius, why was your nose bleeding? I have not filmed any videos with it yet, James. Um, waiting. I think personally, the first video I want filmed with it is the reveal of the suit.
We'll say we'll say super low end professional. It's it's good. It's a great vlog. I got it because the 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 screen flips up on the back. Like I can see the screen, which is great. Um, yeah. I'm gonna start back to the bill because uh, you guys aren't hitting me with those questions. So yeah, what's next? So all the bolts are in, we're in, we're moving over here. Now we're gonna put the bed on. Where is the bed? I'm looking at the bed. What do we got on the bottom? We have, so they did the same thing they did with the Max. They put in these aluminum rails, um, these, this aluminum kind of frame underneath it to help with the heat sink. And they epoxied the living crap out of those connectors. Wow, that's, oh, it has one of the lame connectors. Ooh, I don't like these. These big, uh, what's the uh, uh, XT90 connector plugs? I'm not a fan of these. Um, I've seen some of them burn out. Not a fan. Not a fan. So which way does it want the cable to go? I'm assuming back. Yeah, it has to. Yeah, it has to. Okay. We're learning, we're learning folks, this is live. No, it can't go that way. I am the big dumb, and these go this way. Or else I can't bolt it in. <laughs> All right, so if you're building one of these, lower the axis a little bit, because reasons that these, the other screws, Reed switches are amazing. Um, I can't remember who told me about them, but Mr. Tony Stark in the chat, he is the one who helped me understand and learn them. Um, and he also showed me Hall's of, Hall Effects sensors, uh, which I ha I'm not utilizing yet. I will. They're, they're a good little trick to have for sure. But uh, So I was thinking about it because somebody recently kind of ticked me off with some comments. Or a comment. Um, I'm still salty about it. That uh, I, I'm, I'm low, low effort basically, or just like full of excuses and not trying to help people. Um, I didn't have to share any of this. I didn't have to make any videos. I didn't have to upload any of this. Um, and th this isn't me like on a pedestal. Like, I don't give a shit. That's not what I mean. I mean like, if I didn't do this, if I didn't upload these videos and talk to you guys and record my whole process. I would have never finished this. I would have had, I would have been so damn lost. I would have never learned about read switches. I would have never learned about the Arduino relays. I would have never learned about Hall effect sensors. There is so much stuff that I wouldn't have learned and my suit would A, never be done or B, would look like shit. So just by sharing this and meeting some of you guys, it has made this so much better like than I could have ever hoped for. Um, just bouncing ideas off of each other. The the uh, magnetic the uh, purse class magnets. Those are for my friend Aaron. Uh, you guys might know him and his wife. They made that. They made the best Mark Forty Nine rescue suit in the goddamn world right now. It is. It's that beautiful blue one. Uh, Rogue Fitness Gallery on uh, Instagram. It is. Their suit is incredible. Um, and he, you know, we, me and him would talk all the time and bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, we, I, I think I can safely say we both kind of helped each other build our stuff. Um, when he messaged me, him and his wife had only, it was an ambition. It was like, hey, we want to make this one day. They had only printed the mask. But then seeing my progress, it was like, oh, hey, you know, we can do this. So it kind of lit the fire under his ass. And they passed me, obviously. They passed me up hard. But also because they weren't, they weren't sharing, you know, they were, they, they posted build videos and stuff, but they focused on making their suit and that's, that's all you can expect. That's good. Um, well, I kind of like getting out in front of people and talking about this stuff and teaching this stuff. So it slowed things down for sure. Uh, but it's been so, it's been so worth it. It's been so much fun meeting all of you. And the discord is like this big culmination of just awesome that I absolutely love. And I just lost a washer in the printer. Now I don't know how I'm going to get that one out. 
Hey guys, we just ran into our first problem. I suck. Hmm, that's a that's a predicament. It went under the rail. I need to get that out. Frank Dayton White, what's the best way to position a forearm? I stand stand it so up. Ah. Why am I so lazy? This is who I am. Hey, Matt Harley, one of our newest patrons. Thanks, guy. Appreciate it. Yeah, G, you're actually about to get kicked off the Discord. Um, so I haven't plugged the Discord yet, really. But if you guys, my, my mods have been. Um, but when people rewatch this, typically they don't watch the live chat. They just read comments. Um, Join the Discord if you're new to 3D printing and you want to learn. Hey, I got it. Um, it's There are... The reason I started the Discord or had the idea or kind of was like, hey, we should, you know... I, I wanted something like that. And when Kate, uh, My wife was actually the one who was like, kind of had the idea for the Discord. And it kind of like all clicked because I talked to so many of you. Um, Personally, just on Instagram and through the comments on Facebook on Reddit, I've met so many of you personally that uh, I it was so cool to like, hey, we can bring you all together now. You guys can meet. You guys can bounce ideas off of each other, and that's exactly what it's turned into. It has turned into exactly what I wanted it to. You guys all know each other now. All you builders and printers and cosplayers, and I want to keep growing that. I want to keep expanding on that and pulling we uh, pulling more people in to just amplify the community. Praise, praise the wife. Cool. The bed is on. Now to plug in all my sensors and probably get some of them wrong. Booyah. Okay. So, yeah, this is terrible. Cool. So I'm going to clean up just a little bit here. We're going to renal, if you will. Renal. That, that, that sounds wrong. Put some tools away. I think we're done screwing things in. So I can put basically all the tools away except the nippers. And we're gonna, as I'm turning this thing on for the first time in a minute or two, we're gonna talk about some of the more common problems. Oh, the spool holder. Cool. So the instructions, this is a perfect angle right here. The instructions would have you put the spool holder right here to save space. You know, it, 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 what it does, it would uh, stutter much. Um, so your spool holder is right here, right? Okay. And it's spinning, it's pulling filament in. But, but wait, what happens if you run out of filament? Did this go down yet? No. Wow. So the bed's lowering, the bed's lowering. My fingers are getting covered in grease. My fingers are getting covered in grease. Uh, da, da. Just going, going, going. This is so much fun. How many printers do I have now? Dayton White with the question. Too many. I have six. I have six printers. So, you're printing, you're printing, you're printing. Let me get, uh, let me get you. Spool. You're printing, you're printing, you're printing. You run out of filament. You can't get the spool off. Now granted, you could very easily loosen the spool holder, move it up and down, try to get it out, but just don't do that. Just just mount it somewhere else. Um, or mount it backwards. So, food for thought. I lied, I do need to tighten these up one last time. And we'll do our next round of questions at 15. In uh, eight minutes.
minutes. Yeah. Round. Oh my god, that got that got heavy quick when it's all built. <laughs> all right. This is fun. I need to build more things on camera. This is actually a lot of fun. I don't know. I feel like you guys are here hanging out. Okay. Spools on. Soups up. General 3D print, pretty question. If you do a filament hot change, does it meet, mess up your retraction at all since the filament in the tube isn't getting retraction? I've never thought about that. I've never, I've actually never thought about that. Nah, I've been doing it for a year, never had a problem. I only do hot changes. The only, maybe, maybe my, my CR-10S has actually paused a few times from the filament run out, but typically I don't even let the print pause. I don't like to. Um, I'll do hot swaps all the time. Um, yeah. Huh, never thought about that. Have you ever thought about getting a large format spool like a 10 gram? I'm feeding a 10 gram into my crusher for the Walmart 85 though. This is super convenient. Um, I have. There are no good suppliers over here in the UK. A lot of the 10, 5 and 10 kilogram spool uh, sales, um, like Sunlu and Monoprice, don't make them over here. I don't know if they make them in the States. But, uh, nah, not really. Not really dying over it. Well, all right, so Sashi, the, Sashi is saying it will affect it, but retraction really would only cause stringing. So, and not much. You'd only get a couple hundred, couple hundred millimeters of a few retraction issues, but like nothing that's going to, and if you're going for perfectly clean, beautiful prints with no stringing, pop off the plate and go, then yeah, you might care about stringing. I don't give a shit about stringing. I sand, if you're in prop building like this, you sand everything. Who cares about stringing? Every single jaw, I just printed five helmets and all of the jaws have stringing. Who cares? Stringing, stringing don't matter. Should we have a square to make sure everything is squared away or is that build pretty level? Um, I've never squared up one. You guys can hear me now, huh? Uh, what can we do to fix this situation? Hold on. We got this. I got this. I got this, guys. We got that. Oh, no. It's in the suit. Uh. I gotta reach up Iron Man's butt real quick.
I should be able to charge up the mic while it's plugged in. Let's find out. Can you guys still hear me? You can hear me. We're charging. We're good. Sorry about that. I thought I had that charged up, but I guess I didn't. Apologies. Whistle while I work? No, those people probably using headphones. You're right, man. That's becoming a staple of just like something needs to go wrong. A failed print, audio issues. I was streaming on the Discord and one of my lights fell. I don't know. It's whatever. Yeah, I think we're good. My pocket's probably gonna get a little hot. We'll live. Right. Worst things have happened. We will be all right. That's my Y. Oh, this is so cool. I, 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 is it weird that I'm excited to plug in wires? Is that a, is that a weird thing? All right, let's plug, let's plug some stuff in, folks. So that's my X. This is my Y, and then my Z, my end stop will go here. I'm gonna do some cleaning because I don't like how all of these are arranged. All these wires, I'm gonna clean these up. But for the sake of getting this running, we'll, uh, I'll let some things, I'll let some things slide. And I need my Z. I need one of my Z's. That's my other Y. Ah, ah. No, that's my only Y. What am I talking about? This is the Y. And then this goes over here. I don't see why I can't go under. I gotta reach up Iron Man's butt real quick. What did I say? I don't know what I was talking about. I don't know. Kids, never a dull moment. Damn, you ain't wrong. Um, so these bolts, this should be E, Z. So this is another Z. All right, so we got one short Z right here. So cable management is like, I love cable management. I love taking time to route things and extend them and make them pretty and clean. So what I'm doing now is actually just giving me anxiety, but we'll be all right. E stands for extruder, extruder, because it extrudes. Ooh, do you guys get it? This is my other Z, let's verify. I think I put these on backwards now that I'm looking at it, the rails. Um, my motors probably should have faced backwards, but it shouldn't matter. And here's our filament run out, just with the wire extensions. That's cool, I guess. So I'm gonna run this up and twist this up with this. So filament run outs in. Actually, we'll go one more over the top. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't believe I have two of these. Oh my god. Yes. Alright, so our, all my controls are in, and now we need to plug in this big ass thing. So, right immediately off the bat, I'm getting rid of this, this spool holder. Because I don't like this at all. And I do what I want. I do what I want. I do what I want. Is it the extruder where the plastic goes out? 
I dude, I don't remember. I'm I'm living in the now. I'm like a dog. Cool. So now I have just revealed our Bowden tube. Alright, so I wonder, can I just pull the Bowden tube out? Probably not. So always make sure your Bowden tube right off the bat is pushed all the way into your hot end. Your hot end, not your extruder. And I'm gonna cut this other zip tie off. God, Creality loves zip ties today. Jesus Christ. Well, Building the next one will be easy for when I do that video. And Creality loves to give you Bowden tubes that are way too long. However, this one seems the perfect length for once. That never happens. Then I need the clips. Wait, James, I don't know if you're being serious because I was, I was mocking. Are you serious? You don't, are you asking what an extruder is? Because I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. I have no problem explaining that. I just don't know if you're messing with me. Oh, it gave me an extra nozzle. What size? Probably a four. Okay, that's in. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I gotta I gotta I guess. I think I'm gonna put one zip tie back in the middle of this. Let me figure it out. I might hmm. I don't know. James, you can't do that. Don't do that to me. Kill me. All right, we can do some questions. I'm just doing cable management right now, so this is really low effort for me. Um, so if you guys got some questions about anything, um, don't ask where babies come from. They won't even tell me. No one will tell me. Are they all different plugs? Wow, look at that. All right, so we have nozzle heat. Did they make this idiot proof? That'd be really cool, because there are idiots out there. Um, nozzle heat, and then these are the same types of plugs I use on my suit, actually, so that's kind of funny. If it's out there, somebody can and will mess it up. You bet your sweet ass they will. Well, there's a will, there's a way to screw it up. I know I'm not looking at the screen. I know that I just said, hey, ask questions, and I'm not even looking at the chat. But you know what? You guys can be patient, because I'm having fun. We're having fun here. It's a good thing. What do we got? First thing I would do is scrap that modem tube and replace it. I plan on it, Mark. Tuttle, almost said turtle, I know. Wait, why? Bed thermistor, hey, there's two plugs left. I don't like that at all. That is a crappy plug. This is so low effort reality. Come on. I want to say you're better than this, but... Ah, okay. I'm going to do some very quick cable management so this stops pissing me off. use all these zip ties, honestly.
House Star Boost and the Mark 85 Bleed. I'm glad you called it the Bleeding Edge. Thank you for that. Because um, it is. It is the MCU's Bleeding Edge. Um, even though they didn't want to actually incorporate the actual Bleeding Edge into the MCU because they thought it was a little bit dark, which I can agree with. Kind of gross. Um, it's going good. The 85 should be done in a few days, honestly. I make it, I made very good progress with it. The wires are almost done. I'm painting the cod piece and the new helmet right now, along with some uh, little finishing bits and bobs. And uh, we should be in really good shape soon. Star Boost is um, this week. Once once since I'm on the uh, the final stretch of the 85, Star Boost is on straight up hold for now. But, uh, oh, you know what? That, that makes way more sense to do it that way. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I have. Do I have big zip ties? No, I don't. Uh, how about I have zip ties? Yeah, so Star Roost is on a slight hold for now, um, with the 85 approaching the end. And then, uh, I, I'm going to try to get some parts printing this week for Star Boost. A couple more because um, I just have the legs left. I just have the thighs, the thighs and the shins, but they're big. Um, the thighs and the shins on the 85 alone took a while. Like they were not quick prints, and because of the way they're cut and because of all the detail on it, they have to be sliced in a very particular way. What is going to be my first print on this new printer? No idea, Kayla, person I don't know. Thanks, random citizen. Are you going to dabble in SLA soon? Unboxing my first Mars Pro while watching. I have two under five pluses and two threes. I felt it needed a little more facility. It definitely has its own learning curve. Yes, not here though. Um, because I move around and we're moving soon and I don't really have I'm not gonna keep. I'm not. I don't want to keep a resin printer in my house. Um, I'd want to put it in the garage. But my garage space is limited. I have a paint booth there. There's just a lot. Um, eventually, one day, I will mess with uh, SLA because I want to. Um, not right now, though. It is not something I feel I need. Um, what What gives me a little bit of an ego boost? Which trust me, I need. My ego does not need to be any bigger than it already is. Uh, you can ask my wife. Um, I've had people message me after showing them raw print so my helmets and they're like oh my god what what sla printer do you have or what resin are you using i'm like haha funny story none so that makes me feel good i have good prints i know i do for now that could change in a day it could all fall apart my uh, kayla to answer your question my first print is going to be whatever is on this sd card All right, guys. Everything's plugged in. Um, this cape, this this layout gives me makes me feel bad things. So let's plug it in, and it's going to be in a UK outlet. So we'll put this in here. Okay, we're going to turn this kind of sideways, a so it reaches the outlet. And B, so you guys can kind of see it. So work with me here. All right. Well, this will either blow a fuse or it won't. All right. The BL Touch powered on. Uh, I wanted it to be the first one to hit the power button, but, well, guess not. It's live. Ender 5 Plus powering up. Now, I've heard that these things are loud. I heard that uh, to get a silent board ASAP. So it's the same touch screen that's on my Mac. So basically I have three Maxes now. That's fun. It's not gonna be a ding ding. This is for children. Well, it's not for children, but it, children can watch it. You know what I mean. Oh, hey guys, hold on. Do I want to risk that? Yes. Okay. We're going to put the bed on. I have seen a couple instances where, oh, here, you guys. Um, if you're under the age of 18, please look away.
My arm is so staticky. I have ran into that issue. Um, with, uh, let me read that out loud. Um, I have never been able to match the paint after having to buy the same color twice. It will not match the exact same. Do you run into that issue? Yes, occasionally I do. Unfortunately, it's something you have to deal with. Question on the Mark 85 print. Joel Finn, looking at your picks, you use the chest in DO3D's movie accurate chest. Did you cut it up sections on your own? So no, this is actually not the movie accurate chest. I'll talk about this for a second. Um, 9.30, cool. This is the V1 chest. These are, this is the chest that came out initially. These are the Mark 1, the V1 files. My whole suit is the V1 file set, except the abs are the more movie accurate abs. And then to fit the new abs, I needed to print the V2 cod piece. Um, the chest doesn't actually perfectly fit with these abs. There is a little bit of a gap here, easily mitigated by moving the chest. If this is all one big solid piece, I cut it into four, down the center and across. Frank, any tips on touch-ups? I touched up a silver patch. Unfortunately, t patching repairs with paint is, it'll always give you spotty results. You need to repaint the whole colored section. I have no idea how to level my bed. There are videos for that. I have one, uh, and upgrading my Ender 3. Watch that video, I show you how to level a bed in about two minutes. Is the V2 the movie accurate? Yes, the V2 is the more movie accurate set. All right, so let's heat this up. Well, first, actually, let's make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. So we're gonna move some stuff around. So let's move my X. All right, there we go. So my X goes left. My X goes right, okay. Now my Y. Y goes forward, Y goes back. My Z. So my Z can't go up, it can only go down. Looks good. Everything moves in the way it is supposed to. So let's heat it up. 185, gross. I can't print with that, I print with 210. Let's move that up, and then my bed is gonna be 60. So we're heating. Now let me clip my bed on, and we'll do our first auto level and just see how bad this thing is. I'm excited to print on this build. Stop doing that. Um, this build surface. I've never printed with this glass before. Okay, so. Let's. Level. Here we go. So my X works. Oh, the wheel pushes into it. Ooh, I don't like that. The Y works. It's going to auto center where it thinks it is. Now my Z is going to come up. Ooh. Big things. Do you have a video on fusing parts? I do. I love all the corners barely touching the paper. And when it gets in the middle, it's tight. Uh, Ricardo Perez, that means your bed is warped. That means there's actually a bow in the center of your bed. If that's your problem, unfortunately you might have to get a new bed. Or once you get to the center and the paper's scraping, you adjust all four corners down just a little until the center doesn't scrape. Yeah, your bed's warped, I'm sorry. Um, mindful, Minecraftful into Core XY, will leveling it be the same? I'm not sure. All right, BL Touch works. I should have been paying more attention to that. Stop, 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 okay. All right, so I just went through the auto level feature. The BL Touch recognized it, but now it is sitting a little bit above the bed. So we're gonna actually, uh, James in the file set, VO3D have a separate folder for V2 movie actor chest neck in sex reactor files. That's a good one. The sex reactor files. 
Those kids watching. So I'm heating up. Let's get some filament in through this for the first time. Ooh, ooh, I'm excited. I can smell I can smell the bed heating up. Is that weird? Ah, I can see the red tube the red filament going through the white tube. It's kinda entertaining actually. Alright, let's push them through and see if it extrudes. Hey, look at it come out. There it is. So auto leveling, we're gonna turn it on. Apparently, uh, we've never leveled this one. So we're gonna hit measuring and we're gonna let this go to 16 points and let the BL Touch do its job. And it's gonna measure 16 different points on the bed and give us an act, a reading of where everything's at right now. So we're gonna let it go and do that. You know what that means? Time for questions. Am I a real streamer yet? That's not a stupid question. That's a good question, James. Is it an STL? All right, so uh, let me pull this out. This thing is so freaking cool. <laughs> did you actually make it or still, did you actually make it well and still on plan to fix stuff later? What are you talking about, G? Waiting for some questions. Y'all are so wrapped up in the chat. I'm just gonna stand here. I'm a performing monkey. Dance, clown, dance. Oh, I should put the SD card in, huh? Wherever SD cards may fly. It's official. The Ender 3 is the only printer I've ever had where you can put the SD card in up facing up. Boo, boo. Did you build the printer well? Did you induce problems in it as planned? Gee, I did build it well because after this, when I do and make go and make that video, we're kind of we're running low on time, um, so I'm going to troubleshoot out of box problems. But I am going to go and intentionally break this printer and induce some of those problems. Okay, we're leveled, so let's look at our numbers: negative point negative point four six. Negative 0.56, negative 7, 0.7, negative, all right. So that corner's kind of high. This corner's kind of low. So what we can do is up that just a little. I'm, I'm hip firing here, guys, by the way. We're up that just a little. Up you a little less. And we're just going to go and run our first print and see how it goes. <laughs> Print. There's nothing on the SD card. There's nothing on the SD card, guys. And if there is, let me plug it in my computer and we'll see. <laughs> Hold on. Whee! And we're back. <laughs> I bet there is. I bet the file names are just too long. Hi, guys. How are you? Ah, it's subfoldered. Okay. We have an owl? We have a recorder, we can print a recorder. 
Quake? We can print Quake, that's kind of cool. Um, Joel, it'll take you longer to do that than it would take me. There's actually no G code on this. There's no G code. What? What? Okay, guys, we're gonna slice up some G code real quick. Um, that's incredible. No, it's all it's all STL files. It's all three D objects and STL files. Um. Yeah. All right, question. When you use the Thingiverse Mark 6 hands, did you cut? Did the finger pieces have little holes on the back edges of the slices, file prints? No, they did not. No, I can't print the recorder because it's just a STL. I'm, I, I don't want to print a Benchy. I'm going to print something else. Uh, you guys aren't actually going to see the end of it, so it's going to be a surprise what it is. If you want to know what I printed, join the Discord. I'll post it in it later. Do you like that plug? That was a good plug, huh? Yeah. So let me slice up some G-code real quick. And... Three designs. I have to add a new printer. Let's add an Ender 5 Plus. Are they even on here? Ender 5 Plus, there it is. Only a little bit smaller than my Max, and four, blah, blah. Origin at center, heated bed, build volume, Marlin, okay. So it's gonna go off of my normal settings. We're gonna do a 5% gyroid infill because it is the future. You guys aren't using it. We're gonna change this to 210 and 60. Speed, we're gonna burn an 80. I've never printed it at 80, so we're gonna do that. Z hop one retracted, because why wouldn't you? I don't need supports. I'm not gonna use a raft, I'm not gonna use anything. And go. We have some G code saved, my guys. There it is. And we gotta rename it because if it's too long, the ender won't pick it up. And we're going back. Ah. I can't believe they gave me that without uh, without some files. I can't use my mouse. Where's OBS? That's Wondershare. There it is. Hey, we're back. Cool. Awesome. Put this back in there. Hey, there it is. Press one. Press one. I can't actually touch it. Oh, there it goes. Print. We're printing. Let's see how it goes. And when I when my prime line comes out, that's going to be my prime time to figure out my problems. So, printers with the BL Touch, they'll do like a, a big prime line. They'll do a prime line and then they'll almost make a triangle. They'll go to the center and come back to the corner. And this is your perfect chance to adjust your um, your Z height to make sure everything's printing good. Um, I might not do a Frank's workshop. Um, if you had Octoprint, you wouldn't have to crawl under the table. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, I, I still have to get to my computer to, to do things. You can't... That doesn't make any sense. Which mod didn't plug the Discord yet? Now is your chance. <laughs> We're just waiting for the prints to go. This is gonna go for, we're gonna stream for another 18 minutes. If the print hasn't started or I'm still having problems with those 18 minutes, sorry, we're gonna get off uh, for the night. But uh, yeah, so get those last questions in while this goes. There will be more videos coming out in turn in regards to this. I like I said, I am going to induce problems, uh, some of the typical problems, troubleshooting. Because now I have both types of printers, except for a Delta. Um, I have a Core XY.
type printer where the bed is always flat and moves down, and then I have the normal um, the normal 3D type Creality printer where the bed moves. So I can troubleshoot a lot of different things now, and I'm really excited for that. I'm, uh, it's gonna be fun. Oh my God, Joel Finn with the $15 pledge during the stream. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Joel, for uh, donating to the Patreon. You're freaking awesome. Thank you, it popped up on my phone. Ricky H, mostly out of curiosity, why don't you run Octoprint? I see no benefit to it, me. I can monitor my prints remotely with my cameras. I can turn them on and off with my Wi-Fi plugs. Um, and what, I don't need spaghetti detector because my prints don't fail that often. Don't need them. Ever mess with G code for startup and movement functions? No, I have not. I haven't needed to. Do you, Chris Robertson, do you have any ideas for any mods you'd be adding to the printer now that it's built? Automatically, it's a little louder than I like. Silent motherboard, main board. Um, Bowden Capricorn tube and all metal extruder. Those are the three I'm gonna get right off the bat and that should be the only upgrades I'm gonna need. Um, I just want it a little bit quieter because this, this is as loud as my Ender 3. Um, it is a, it's, about, it's as loud as my CR10s were. Um, a, a silent main board from Creality for the Ender. Oh, hold on, here we go. All right, we are nowhere near the bed. We're just we're just pissing spaghetti. Ah, uh, we're gonna need to get much closer than that. Yep, 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 yep. I'm just chasing it, guys, until it starts to print. Oh, that's better. We're gonna go with a negative 140, I think. Did I just save that? I think I got it, guys. We still might be a little bit too far. Nope, she'll survive. We're, we're off, she's printing. I had mad spaghetti. <laughs> With your elastic strap, and do you stretch the elastic so the parts pull together or attach the length and have it strap? James, that depends on what you want. What do you want it to do? Do you want it to pull together or do you want it to sit normally and be able to stretch? The fingers I have relaxed and then when I bend them, they stretch. So the, the chest to the abs right here, I have those pulling a little bit. So it depends on the application. Keegan Bond, you doing good? Yes, I am. Oh god, is that how loud the Ender 3 is going to be? Um, this is probably picking it up a lot louder than this is. So guys, we're printing. My perimeters are coming out good. Here's a fun question. Do you guys pull off your prime line right after the print starts? Because I do. Yes, you now have access to a special secret part of the Discord channel. <laughs> Guys, we're printing. Oh, look at that. Look at that smooth base. This is a cool printer. I like this thing. So looking at this, my y-axis should never, you know what I didn't check? I didn't check to see if anything out of the box was tight. I didn't wobble my, uh, my, my, my nozzle back and forth. I don't know if this is even tight. It feels tight. So there, I don't know if there's any wobble there. I didn't check any of my eccentric nuts. It's printing though. Maybe I'm just that good. <laughs> so guys, uh, we have
Do 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 do. Is there enough plastic in the world for a six foot two fat man to make a suit? Yes, there is. If if we can make a whole buster eventually, we can make uh we can make you a suit. Asking for a friend. How could I forget to check my nuts? I don't know. It's it's uh it's just a problem, you know. Wow, that's coming out smooth. Oh wow, actually, I watched the Z Hopper right there. That was pretty cool. So this thing is gonna put out some big parts. That's my goal for these. These two Ender fives. Um, they're gonna put out tall, big parts because the bed doesn't move. I won't have any wobble. I won't have any risks to that. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. So hit me with those comment, closing comments and questions and concerns. We have 12 minutes left. Jeet, what did you just donate? What is that? Jeet, what currency is that? I don't know. Thank you for donating a hundred of something. I don't know what that is, though. <laughs> Thanks, man. I don't know why you did that, but thank you. Does somebody want to hit me with that conversion? Because I, I don't know. I, I Thank you. If it's, if it's 50 cents, if it's a hundred, thank you. Like, thank you. No, Monopoly money is what they have here in England. And I'll say it. Fight me. Oh, look at that gyroid info. Oh my god, it's beautiful. How did you paint the helmet on the table? This one? Or the camo one? Hey, I'll take it. Thank you, Gene. Thanks for the tip on connecting the elastic with super glue. I was able to successfully test my brush on super glue with elastic earlier. You're welcome. If you don't take peel it off, it's like bad you do. I get paranoid. One dollar and thirty-three cents. The gold is so nice. Rupees. Hey. So this is gonna be a battle damage helmet actually. Um, I just haven't battle damaged it yet. This is a Rustoleum metallic gold. Um, I don't use it on my suit because you can't clear coat it. This can't take a clear coat. It'll destroy the uh, finish. But they look really good as a display piece. As opposed to... Don't fall apart. This gold I use for my suit. It's a, it's a more dull, flatter gold, but it can take a clear coat, and it's more accurate to the Mark 85 gold. So... Just wanted to say thank you for inspiring me to get a 3D printer and start my own armor build. New sub here and glad to be one. Thanks, Frank. Dreaded Ginger. That's an awesome name. You're welcome. Thank you for that awesome comment. I appreciate it. Um, if you're new to the channel, join the Discord. I'm plugging it just for you because if you're new to 3D printing, it is a wealth of information. And a lot of the people in this chat can help you get better at printing. You're going to make a battle damage is differently this time. Yeah, this battle damage is going to be very similar to my previous ones. This is actually already sold to a friend. Um, so he's expecting the same kind of battle damage. But the other helmets I have that I just printed, the other five, they're going to be battle damaged a little bit differently. Yeah, you're not wrong. She is, uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth is immortal. I have watched Clone Wars. Yes, so Sashi de Sage can't take clear coat. Yes, a lot of the metallic paints can't take a clear coat, a, a sealant, a final uh, coat to protect it, a gloss coat. Um, they react badly to it. It'll even say it on the can, not, top coat not recommended, top coat not required. Because a lot of golds like this are really shiny, but they're only for display, they're for decoration, they're for interior parts. They're not meant to be handled and they can't take a clear coat, or some other golds can. So you need to read the can, and you need to do a lot of experimenting and testing to make sure that the metallics you're using can take a clear coat. It's a really good way to put a lot of work into something and then suddenly ruin it all with a clear coat. 
always test your parts. You're a ginger with dreads. It fits. You're right. This is another gold. This is a different Rust-Oleum metallic, and you can see it's a little shiny. You can see it shining right there. This one also can't take a clear coat. Cool little keyblade plug. So it looks very nice, but it's, again, it's for display only. It, it looks great, but if I was to touch this enough and really like get my greasy fingers all over it, the gold would actually start to come off because there's no clear coat on it. And if you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, you're awesome. I will, any chance I have to pick up this Keyblade, I will take it, by the way. I love this thing. Yes. Seven minutes left, guys. Are you going to make a video on your PVC mannequin? You guys really want that video? Like, really? It's, it, you, you buy PVC pipe and you make a stick figure. Like, I guess. I just, I don't know. I can. It's bad. I need to adjust it. It's, it's, not, it's not in good shape right now. Um, uh, he's fallen on hard times. When are you getting a belt printer? I've seen some of them are coming out um, a lot lately, and they're funny. Um, I don't print stuff small and like that. Any excuse to touch the keyblade that you shouldn't touch? Yes, you're correct. The magnets on this are starting to fail. Can you guys still hear me? I'm just gonna do the rest of the video in the mask. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. There's nowhere, I can't put my hands anywhere on the printer. If you want to know how to make this mask, go check out my videos. And surprise, surprise, guys, for the month of August, this DO3D Mark 85 helmet is actually the giveaway for uh, the giveaway. Haha, <laughs> be real. That was bad. Um, yes, yeah, so for, I had didn't do a helmet giveaway or any giveaway for July. This is going to be August's giveaway. So from August 1st to August 15th. I'm not sure what we're going to need to do yet. Rules and details to be announced, but some of you got some, so the ones watching will get a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a heads up. So this is going to actually be the giveaway. Um, I like this helmet. It was the original one for my suit, but... We're gonna move on because now I have the CG Trader one, and this is actually, uh, yeah, this helmet actually means a lot to me. Um, I'm proud of it. It's a little tight fitting, so I have a I have a pretty big head. It should fit most people, but you just I'll, I'll explain that in the rules. Just be prepared if it does not. Does that helmet have room for servos? No, Joel Finn. This one does not. I did one. I did once see someone build their own belt printer. Yep. Infinite Z printing. Thanks, Gus Man here. Cool. Ah, this is printing beautifully, guys. Look at it go. I'm happy. I have my first Ender 5 Plus. I'm still going to call this a Core XY because the bed doesn't move. Um, only the X and Y axis do. So, whatever. Sue me. I don't really care.
So yeah, that'll be uh, the giveaway prize for uh, August, and uh, I might do a, I'm going to be doing a special patron-only giveaway as well, something a little cooler than last time. We're going to slowly try to build that up. Um, MVP only, sorry, not just patron. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, James Hennigan, I did not get the Mark VI helmet finished yet. I'm still waiting on the eyes. Um, I'm waiting on the eyes to finish this helmet, to finish two helmets there, to finish another helmet. I, I'm wait, I ordered like 10 sets of eyes and they haven't arrived yet. Yeah, so there'll be a video up on the Mark VI and me refurbishing that uh, once I get everything finished. Chip 5.0, another patron, thanks. I just want to say thank you everybody for all of this. This is fun. I like doing this. This is like really cool. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate the donations. I appreciate the, uh, the patrons, everybody on my Discord. Um, you guys make this worth keep, to keep going. Like this is just, this is just fun and cool. And uh, I'm having a good time with it. So I really appreciate everything. Hopefully I can continue. The Mark 85 is almost done, head or not. Um, Star Boost is going to be the next project. I have another bigger project. If you want to know what that's about, that's starting hopefully by the end of July, maybe beginning of August. It involves the Hulkbuster. Go to the Discord to learn more about that. Go watch some of my other videos because you're just awesome and you like to learn things. And yeah, I think that's about going to wrap it up for the stream. So if you guys have any real last final questions, I can try to bang them out real fast, but I think we're going to call it a night. Yeah. I think that's it. Hey, you know what? When G, when you made that donation of 100 rupees, it actually automatically converted it down for me in my uh, stream dashboard, and I can see how much it is now. So thank you for the donation. I appreciate it a lot. It does not go unnoticed. Last Discord plug. Go, oh, Chip, stop. Why'd you do that? Thank you, Chip, for the uh, $2 donation. You're already a patron. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, I hope all my patrons had a good time on the patron-only game night last night. That was a lot of fun. Um, Matt Harley, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. And G, you just got showed up. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm so kidding. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for everything. This is some of the best fun I've had in my life, this whole hobby, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, have a good night. Now to awkwardly end the stream, because I was unprepared for that.